He might look like your everyday stockman, but organic farmer Glenn Morris is about much more than just beef. When I'm looking at what's going on with the landscape, I'm, I'm looking at how can we actually enhance the soil, how can we enhance ecosystem processes so that we can actually do something about climate change and nutrition and water. We basically planted about 7,000 trees after we got here in some previous cropping areas. So we're trying to get that connectivity back in the landscape, hold more water. For years, he's been looking at ways he can better work with the environment. So you've regenerated a lot of this land here? Absolutely, yeah. We've, um, we've put vegetation and um, a lot of extra fencing in to regenerate this land. And a very different picture to what it looked like. Absolutely, yeah. We're getting that soil health back and getting the pastures thickened up and yeah, the whole landscape's holding together like it should now. Land management in New South Wales is covered by a complex system of legislation. The state government has proposed new laws it says should slash red tape and help balance environmental concerns with industries like agriculture and mining. But Glenn Morris worries new biodiversity laws in New South Wales will mean less vegetation, not more. Last month he took those concerns on a 600 plus kilometre ride to Sydney, where he stopped traffic on the Harbour Bridge. I was down there to raise the bar to say that we need more respect for the bush, for soils in general. If every farmer's got an efficiency code that says get rid of that tree that's in the way of my plough, we're going to have a very bare landscape and a worse situation than we've already got. It's here in northwestern New South Wales that farmers have been calling for changes to the Native Vegetation Act. Calls echoed by Walgett farmer Cameron Roundtree. Uh, this is invasive scrub, um, in my view, and we, we need to control this. Um, Would you like to clear this? Yeah, I'd like to clear it, and I'd like to open it up and, and let the grasses grow and, and let the, uh, the grown mature trees keep going. Otherwise, it's going to be an environmental disaster here because nothing else can grow on the ground. A third of Cameron Roundtree's farm is cleared for cropping. He runs cattle on the rest. I've been advised that the guy who's been talking about farming over in Inverell has 70% of his country cleared. I've got 30%. I'd love 70%. We've got truckloads of native veg. This is the, the perception out there that you're going to drive over the western the, the range and there'd be like a wasteland. I mean, have a look around. There is so much out here. And this is what frustrates. They don't come and have a look at what we're dealing with. Everywhere you look is native vegetation. But this legislation is about much more than just agriculture. It's about threatened species and biodiversity with conservationists warning that here in New South Wales, the rate of biodiversity being lost is happening at an alarming rate. He's starting to try and push that big tree over. There it goes. This is what conservationists are trying to stop. Habitat being bulldozed in the southwest of New South Wales to make way for agriculture. New South Wales and Queensland have been named and shamed as one of 11 hotspots for land clearing globally. Australia was the only developed nation that made that list. Conservationists say the existing laws have wound back land clearing rates by as much as 40%, protecting the land and more than a million native animals on it. They fear the proposed bill will have the opposite effect. Rather than actually raising the bar for mining companies, what this legislation is doing is lowering the bar for landholders across the state. And so basically what we'll see is very likely local extinctions or even statewide extinctions for some of those thousand threatened species that are on the threatened species list because of the increased dodgy offsetting scheme. Urban development is also transforming wild spaces. Only 9% of New South Wales remains in a pristine natural state. Landowner Jocelyn Howden lives in the Glenory Wildlife Refuge, almost 100 hectares of private bushland she has helped to protect with the New South Wales government. We could see development coming and we could see the potential for this to be cleared and no longer available for all the amazing flora and fauna that, that live here. So uh, that was why a couple of us moved to a conservation covenant which is a stronger protection than the wildlife refuge and we felt that, that we were protecting it in perpetuity. She and her neighbours had the intention of protecting the land forever, regardless of sale. 
but now worry that complex changes means their land may be one day traded away in an offset scheme. While I feel reasonably confident that I can protect this land in my lifetime, I feel as though after I'm gone, there's no protection anymore. If this bill goes through, then the protection provided for a conservation agreement is far less binding, I feel, than it was um, when we took it out. We are calling on the Baird government to scrap this deeply flawed package and go back to the drawing board and actually come up with a package that is going to be workable and protect nature here in New South Wales. The government says conservationist fears are unfounded and are pushing ahead with wholesale legislative change. But our aim is to have a package that will reduce red tape, will encourage ecologically sustainable development and enhance biodiversity. We'll take on board the comments of scientists, of environmentalists, of farmers, of miners, of developers, uh, of all key stakeholders to arrive at a final package that achieves those three aims. Cameron Roundtree was hoping the new laws would deliver more control over his lands, but he doesn't see that happening soon. We've been asked to sign off on something that we don't even know what's, what it looks like. The maps aren't available, they won't be available until next year. The legislation will be enacted before that happens. So it's a really worrying time for us.